Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm going to tell you guys all about the different locations you can work for risk management, um, some of my methodology and how I've kind of narrowed this list down to different things, uh, and kind of to show you you don't have to work in New York City or Chicago, and perhaps why a lot of quants aren't actually working in New York anymore. So let's just dive on in here. Okay, so when we look at this map here, let's just go through the big main hubs, talk about the markets briefly, and then I'll dive into kind of the different parts of this here. Uh, so start off with your right, most quant finance jobs, most finance jobs, right? A lot of different ventures, investment firms, banks, hedge funds, like anything and everything under the sun is going to be located in New York City or right around New York City. So think like Jersey City, Connecticut, right? It's all kind of nestled in that tri-state area. Uh, the second main area that we think about a lot when you think about, you know, trading, finance, those sorts of things, uh, is going to be Chicago. Okay. So Chicago is going to be a hub in the fact of derivative sorts of products here. So you can think about like options, you can think about commodity contracts. Uh, there's just a lot of trading that happens in Chicago. Again, because like the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, right? You have the hub there. There are a lot of big banks in that area as well. Those are those two big areas everybody talks about. Um, but when we start looking at this a little more from a quant finance side, so I consider things as investing side and non-investing side. Um, you can consider investing versus banking, which is probably a more accurate way to look at that. Um, you can also look at it perhaps on a buy side versus sell side, okay? So buy side is gonna be like the investing side, people that are buying assets, uh, doing some investing, selling, buying more assets, right? They're on that kind of trading side, portfolio management. And then on the flip side, you have the sell side, and sell side would be more of the banking side, right? Those that are creating products, typically on the credit side, you know, they can be creating derivative products, they can be creating all kinds of other sorts of products, IPOs, for example, to do equity. Anyways, so you kind of have the buy and sell as well. I like to view it though, investing versus non-investing, just because for me, it seems a little more accurate in the way it's kind of described. Um, but those are the big hubs. What a lot of people don't talk about though is where is the credit markets located? Right, where are these banks located? So I'm just gonna throw it out here so a lot of you know, because I don't think many people know this, is there is a credit card hub, a credit hub in general, I'll call it, uh, and that's going to be out of like the North Carolina, Charlotte area, uh, even up through like DC, kind of in that corridor. There's a lot of different banks and organizations that all work on the credit side kind of in that hub. Um, so why do we have hubs? Well, one is for talent, right? So it makes sense if you're a big bank, you have a bunch of talent, you hire them, you bring them in. Uh, eventually people are gonna leave, people are gonna quit, people are gonna find other jobs, uh, and you're gonna have to refill those positions. It makes a lot of sense to be kind of located near all the other banks, so you can pull people in that do the same sort of job. So the same goes for like New York, right? It's amazing, because if you have like a hedge fund, for example, you can be a small, tiny company, and yet there's a massive pool of talent there. And so you can pick and choose who you want and kind of pull people in. Um, it's a lot harder to get people to move across the country. Um, so now that all being said here, the banking side is shifting a little bit differently in the sense that um, there are regional banks across the country. There are going to be now banks that are shifting all their offices out of New York City that had banks there as well. Uh, the reason for this has to do with cost, right? New York City is amazing. It is fun. It is exciting. And so if you're young, it's a great place to be. But when staff and employees start getting older, they want to have, you know, spouses and families and children and all these other things. And it's really challenging to do that in New York City. And it gets really, really expensive. So a lot of experienced talent ends up leaving New York and going outside. Um, from the banking perspective as well, it's extremely expensive to pay talent in New York City because you have to pay them a ton of money just so they can get you know a little bit of bare minimum cost of living here. Uh, New York City is great when you're young, career-wise you can build things, but when you have other hobbies, other interests, um, it starts becoming kind of a burden on the employee and on the corporation as well, as expenses get quite high. So a lot of people started moving to New Jersey, that was kind of the loophole, New Jersey's taxes are atrocious. So I lived in New Jersey, I paid out more taxes in New Jersey than I would have paid out living in New York City. Um, again, there's a bunch of other factors in there. But a lot of these regional banks here are key players when CCAR hit back in 2010. So when CCAR came in and DFAS, these regulations for after the 2007-2008 financial crisis, a lot of these regional players uh, needed to do actual quantitative financial modeling. Um, quants for banking, they call them risk management. 
Okay, so don't get confused here. I know it's a little bit confusing. Uh, they call it risk management. You're just a quant for a bank versus a quant for a hedge fund. So you work at a hedge fund, they might call you, I don't know, like quantitative researcher. Uh, at a bank, they might call you a model developer. Um, you work in risk management though. You're a risk management model developer. It's almost the same thing as a quant researcher uh, at a hedge fund. A lot of times you're even building the same sorts of model on very similar sets of data. Um, but again, just the other half. So where are these markets? Let me just dive into a shotgun approach here and just show you kind of all the places you can and can't live on this map here. So you can live in San Francisco, Phoenix, Salt Lake, uh, Dallas, Minneapolis, Chicago, uh, a few different cities in Alabama. There's one in Charlotte. There's one in New York, you know, Massachusetts, uh, Rhode Island, Ohio, New York, upstate, you know, Pennsylvania, right? That's kind of what you see here on the map. And how did I actually get this list here? This is what you guys are going to be wanting to know, or at least you should be asking here. Um, I took the CCAR 2014 bank list. So the banks that are required to do CCAR has changed due to thresholds being changed and adjustments and all that. Um, I started back in 2014. I think 2014 was an amazing time, an amazing snapshot, somewhat of a turning point, probably back in 2012 to 2014, somewhere in there, where banks were shifting into doing quantitative finance that were not as quantitative as they were before. Uh, so we're gonna go through this list here quickly to give you an idea of the players. Uh, I have a location here, so location one, location two, location three. Uh, different banks have different offices in different locations. Uh, some offices might have two or three staff members, some might have you know 50 staff members, some might have 100 or 200, depending where you're at. Uh, so you have to be kind of careful on where is the headquarters at for the bank. You're probably gonna be near there for a lot of banks. But also keep in mind there are other locations. Um, I gathered this through looking at job postings. So went online, looked at these banks, you know, I knew a lot of them where they're located in general, uh, but there are gonna be some alternative offices here I'm gonna mention as well. So let's just go through this real quick. Uh, advanced approach BHCs, so bank holding companies. These are the really large banks, the bigger institutions, for example. Uh, it's gonna be American Express here. So American Express is gonna be out of New York City and Arizona, so Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Citigroup's gonna be out of Irving, Texas. So this is just a small city inside of the Dallas-Fort Worth area here. I guess it's a fairly large city, but it's a city inside of Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, New York City is a second location and Tampa, Florida is a third location. Morgan Stanley's gonna be out of Dallas, Texas in New York City. US Bank Corp's gonna be out of Minneapolis in New York City. Uh, Bank of America is going to be out of Charlotte and Jersey City. Uh, Goldman Sachs has their risk management team here in Dallas downtown. Um, I don't know if they have any other offices. I'm guessing they probably have some in New Jersey or New York area. Northern Trust is in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Wells Fargo is in Charlotte, North Carolina and Dallas, Texas. Bank of New York Mellon is going to be out of New York City. HSBC is going to be out of New York City in Sheffield, Alabama. Uh, PNC is going to be out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Capital One is going to be out of Plano, Texas. JP Morgan Chase is also going to be out of Plano. Uh, Plano, Texas, again, is just another city in Dallas, Fort Worth area. Uh, and then State Street is going to be out of Boston, Massachusetts. Okay, so now they're going to have what they call other BHCs. These are smaller regional banks that are less complicated, less dynamic. Uh, a lot of this comes down to capital threshold levels. And another piece this is going to come into whether you have derivative products whether you're originating derivative products, things like that. Um, but other BHCs is an amazing spot to start your career. I started my career at an other BHC here, a regional bank. Uh, you learn a lot at the small bank. You get a lot of hands-on kind of experience and training as well. So I give a big thumbs up if you're looking to get in um, and you can't get into a big one, right? These other ones are just amazing opportunities as well. But again, you get out what you put into it here. Uh, so these other BHCs are going to be Ally Bank out of Louisville, Texas. Again, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, BB&T and SunTrust, so I'm going to mention them together. They're separate banks on this list. Uh, they have been merged, so through a merger here, uh, to be Truist Bank. Uh, Truist Bank, so I'm going to just list off these two together, is going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina, and Atlanta, Georgia. So they got put together. Uh, those are the locations for them. BBVA Compass is going to be out of Birmingham, Alabama, and New York City. BMO is going to be out of Chicago, Illinois. Comerica Bank is going to be out of Dallas, Texas. Discover Financial Services. So yes, think Discover like the credit card company. Uh, they're out of Riverwoods, Illinois and Houston, Texas. 
I think, I believe, this one was one of the harder ones to kind of find the offices and locations for. Uh, and then Fifth Third Bank is out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Huntington is out of Columbus, Ohio. Key Corp is out of Cleveland, Ohio. m and is out of Buffalo, New York. Uh, RBS Citizens, so I just know them as Citizens Bank. Uh, they're out of Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, Regions is out of Birmingham, Alabama. Santander is out of Boston, Massachusetts. New York City and Dallas, Texas. Union Bank is going to be out of San Francisco, California. Uh, and Zions Bank is going to be out of Salt Lake City, Utah. So one trend I hope you've noticed in here is that Dallas, Texas or Dallas, Fort Worth area is starting to become this fairly large hub, right? We have JP Morgan Chase. We have Goldman Sachs. We have Capital One. We have Santander. We have Comerica Bank, right? A lot of these institutions are moving headquarters to Dallas, okay? Taxes are amazing in Dallas, Texas. This is why so many businesses are coming here. Uh, the more banks that keep moving here, it creates this magnet of like, you know, good talents already here. Where are we gonna move? Where do we want cheaper taxes? A lot of banks are gonna be moving towards Dallas, Texas here. Uh, now that being said, there are a lot of great regional banks out there. Uh, I would keep in the back of my mind though to think about where you wanna live. So again, New York City is great. It's amazing when you're young, um, but as you start to get older, right, you need to find something else a lot of times. Uh, working in the risk management side, the banking side, I think is awesome because you have this massive map here, right? So career-wise, if I decide I don't like where I'm working for some reason, or like, I don't know, I want an advancement, um, I can look at this map, I can think about these sorts of banks, uh, and I can figure out, okay, I wanna live in, let's say, I don't know, Ohio for some reason. And so I can look in Ohio and say, okay, there's three banks in Ohio, uh, I can apply to the three different banks. I can kind of figure out, you know, the opportunities available. But you can see from this map here that you can live all over the United States here uh, on the banking side. And I will mention this now from the buy side or the investing side here. It is extremely hard to find actual quantitative finance funds um, in other cities outside of New York and Chicago and probably California as well, maybe San Francisco area. So I've looked, I've done some research. This video is not on that topic. Uh, but a lot of these jobs are going to be falling into New York City and Chicago. You don't have a lot of opportunities to move out into other cities. I can tell you Dallas, Texas is not a hub for hedge funds, quantitative finance hedge funds. Okay, You can find other hedge funds here, other investment firms, uh, but they're not going to be quantitative finance hedge funds that are very rigorously driven by quantitative methods. So you're going to have to pick and choose these trade-offs here. It's hard to switch tracks as well. So if you want to start on the buy side or you want to start on the sell side, a lot of times it is very challenging to switch to the opposite side. Um, and again, the opportunities aren't going to line up as easily based on all these different cities. So again, if you're young, you have the time, you have the money, you don't mind making a lot of sacrifices. Uh, New York City and Chicago are great opportunities and great places to start a career. Um, but do keep in the back of your mind, there are all these different cities and all these different banks that you can work at if you decide to go uh, you know, on that sell side here, right? The banking side, uh, it's a little less stressful. There's a great opportunity for her work-life balance here. Working from home has been fairly popular. Um, and again, a lot of these big banks are gonna have multiple locations. So you might be able to kind of transfer around and figure out a better place to live based on cost of living and your personal preferences. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please do share this, right? Other people will find this content very helpful is not a lot of people realize you can work in other places besides New York City and Chicago. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you found it helpful as well. And as always, until next time.